Greetings, strategy connoisseurs, and welcome to an overview of a brand new game on my channel, Freeman Guerrilla Warfare. I'll go over its history, its features, its gameplay, and my overall impressions as concisely and informatively as possible. The good, the bad, and the ugly. While though I did receive this key for free to review, I will not simply ramble on from a provided script. I played this game for a good chunk of time and will try to provide an accurate and objective take at the game, along with my own subjective take of just about every aspect of Freeman. As always, timestamps for relevant segments will be in the description. Freeman Guerrilla Warfare officially launched into Steam Early Access on February 1st of 2018 by KK Game Studio. It miraculously escaped the inescapable and left Early Access a couple weeks ago on October 4th of 2019. Since its initial debut, developer KK Game Studio faithfully continued to update the game regularly and keep players informed. It was initially very well received, with its Steam reviews in the very positive range. However, since its full release, recent reviews have unfortunately dropped to mixed. A small update was released 5 days later, on October 9th, which fixed some bugs and did some minor balancing. There is also promise of a future update which intends to improve and balance overall features as well as add more guns. KK Game Studio is a relatively new developer, based in Hong Kong. Freeman Guerrilla Warfare is their first and only game release, though in 2017 they attempted to greenlight an ambitious project called Freeman Star Edge, which is currently titled as Paused on KK Game Studio's website. Freeman Guerrilla Warfare is obviously and clearly inspired by Mountain Blade, sharing an extremely similar gameplay flow. As such, I will be making many references to Mountain Blade, which I encourage you to play if you have not already. From character creation to the core gameplay loop, I nearly felt like I was playing a Warband mod. The main difference simply being that instead of attempting to free Calradia, you're attempting to reunite a collapsed post-Soviet state with present-day equivalent weaponry. You control a singular character in RPG fashion and may command and lead your army through squads of up to 7 soldiers. Very similarly to Warband, you start with nearly nothing and work your way up to eventually take over and manage your own cities. Additionally, you can recruit and hire companions, which, like Warband, act as immortal soldiers that can eventually work under you and manage their own armies. The economy also functions similarly to Warband, with villages sending goods to cities which in turn increases a city's and villages' wealth. You can buy certain discounted goods in one city and sell them for an excess profit in another if you want to take the life of the trader. Doing so is very easy as you can simply go to a bar and bribe the bartender to tell you what's cheap to buy and good to sell. A major part however that I immediately felt missing in Freeman was the village, city, and bar scenes. Everything happens on the campaign screen through interface windows, with no option to explore villages or cities in person. You talk to static NPC images through the interface. You accept quests, you turn in quests, all through the interface, and never in person. While this isn't massively impactful, and perhaps more convenient, it greatly takes away from the RPG elements and atmosphere that Warband excelled at. The only time you can walk around is on the battlefield. The campaign map and gameplay is clearly and obviously inspired by Warband. While not bad, you get what you get, and there's nothing innovative or new in this regard. Quests are basic in what you'd expect. They have difficulty ratings and are randomly generated. They have the same level of Warband in the sense that you bring item X here, move item X here, kill what bandits Y here, destroy looters what hideout Z here, bring prisoners here, etc. The graphics are mediocre. Nothing revolutionary, but not awful. The campaign map is of the same quality as Warband, and the battlefields are of similar quality. There's tremendous variance in model quality. Some are very blurry, with awful textures, and some look pretty decent. Units and weapon designs are decent. Modeling is not the greatest. Animations for the players are good, but troop and AI animations don't look very good. Performance is likewise mediocre. I well exceed the recommended specs, and I still get occasional frame drops or stuttering in large battles. Overall though, I tended to maintain 144 FPS. The actual gameplay on the battlefield is a mixed bag. Small-scale combat is intense and thrilling, as your influence and tactics can make the difference in a win. Large-scale invasions, however, are incredibly hectic and unit placement does matter. Audio, however, often bugs out and is unintelligible when there's too many guns going off.
However, the unit tactics are very limited, and you can only set formations and order movements. And it's all limited from the tactical map overview. There's no in-game commands. Unfortunately, line of sight plagues this game to an awful extent. AI can see and shoot through trees and grass when you cannot. As you crest a hill and grass blocks your view, you can get lasered without even knowing it. This even happened with solid objects at times, and really ruined my experience. Likewise, the AI thoroughly sucks. The enemy always charges you in a big long line no matter what, whether you're attacking, sieging, or defending. They never use tactics of any sort. When you the player uses tactics, AI often stands around before they actually start moving and responding. It just feels pretty clunky at times. I'm also mixed on unit and squad management. Every unit is managed individually, and you can customize their loadouts to the T. You can recruit soldiers with their equipment for exorbitant prices, or you can re recruit soldiers without any equipment for a fraction of the cost and equip them yourself. Unlike Warband, upgrading soldiers does not upgrade equipment and unit type, and rather only upgrades their base skills and weapon proficiencies, much like companions. XP and leveling up is global and based on global XP received for the party, not necessarily just for individual units. The micromanagement can get annoying, but thankfully there's auto group and auto equip buttons to give each unit the best in slot weapon and armor that they can use that you have in your inventory. Squads themselves are interesting, and I don't entirely understand their point. Squad morale is individual, and squads can be commanded individually on the battlefield. However, every squad is limited to 7 fighters, and you can only deploy a limited number of squads on the battlefield. To the best of my knowledge, from my tests, 78 is the maximum number of soldiers that you can deploy on the battlefield, so do not expect exceptionally large battles. Even if you level up your gun skills to maximum, and have the best gun in the game with the best sight, you still will not have perfect accuracy. There's consistent and annoying bloom on nearly every shot, though I did get used to it after a while, as annoying as it was. Diplomacy and NPC interaction is very stale. Companions and generals tend to lack character and depth, and the conversations that you can have with them are very limited. Additionally, the game has a lot of broken or awkward English spattered throughout. The developers do not have English as their first language, and it is clearly shown. It is to the point where I was confused what exactly certain things meant, simply by the ambiguity of the language. Controls are responsive, and movement on the battlefield is one thing they did very well. Your speed and stamina for sprinting are determined by your agility skill level, but overall things work very smoothly. Keybinds can be changed and are overall decently intuitive, however prone is toggled with C and crouch with Z, which feels flipped in my opinion. Late game management is mediocre. If you capture a city, you can set policies and you can build new buildings, though you arbitrarily need a couple building supplies such as wood or iron. Buildings affect things in minor ways, and the system is overall quite confusing with over a dozen buildings to build in a clogged management system with relatively pointless numbers. It feels like a case of quantity over quality, in my own opinion. Modding support is technically in the game, though there are no noteworthy mods as of yet, and there's no official Steam Workshop integration. Lastly, you're mostly on your own in terms of guides. While there is a basic graphic tutorial that can be referenced at any time, it provides very basic gameplay information and you're mostly left to your own devices to figure out what to do. On top of this, the game's official Wikipedia is severely outdated and lacking. The developers did say they would update it, but little has happened so far. The negative reviewers have cited missing and removed features, lack of co-op, bugs, and broken gameplay features, and I tend to agree. I ended up playing the original version of the game, as it was offered with the final release, and I was blown away. As I played the original version from February of 2018, I genuinely had to double check to make sure I didn't mix things up. Momentarily, I thought I was playing the final release. The original release had character, impressive graphics, smooth gunplay, and an original design and direction. What impressed me the most was the graphics, however. The battlefield scenes and campaign map both had impressive detail, textures, and lighting. And I'm very confused why they left this detailed style for something drastically more simplistic. It did lack a lot of battlefield improvements, especially when issuing movement orders, but it looked so much better. The new map was a downgrade, in my opinion, and looking back at things, the original version had a lot more going for it, and a lot more potential. The original version also toted promises of artillery, vehicles, air support, and other more advanced features, all of which are nowhere to be seen in the final version. 
Another thing to note is that there is no representation of black characters in the game. You cannot choose a black or dark skin for your own character, and there are no AI players that are black. It could be that the developers think it wouldn't be accurate given a Russian type setting. However, it feels blatantly missing and somewhat racist given little reason not to add it in. In my honest opinion, Freeman Guerrilla Warfare took a turn for the worse. It had promise and potential, but quickly lost itself. My guess is that they felt pressure to copy the success of Warband, and were challenged by the complexity of promised features. The final release feels rushed and pushed out, just getting it done so they can say it's done, without truly polishing and bringing the game to a promised finality. It is indeed unfortunate, as if the final release was anywhere near what version 0.1 promised, the game would be in a very different state. But there is hope in future updates that they have promised. However, it's not an awful game. If you like Warband and want a modern day setting with decent gunplay, it's a great game to kill some time. I did genuinely have some fun and will likely pick it up from time to time. Comparisons aside, it is buggy, doesn't look the best, and is pretty clunky at times, but can be truly fun if you have the patience for it. Yet, its price at $24.99 is hard to justify. Get it on sale if you have the chance. Regardless, it is a worthy first entry from KK Games Studio. I hope they can learn and improve from their mistakes. They seem to have passion and are excited about their project, and I appreciate that. I'm very thankful they gave me the opportunity to play their game. But I would be wary in purchasing any more early access games from them in the future. What you promised may very well not be what you get. Thank you so very much for watching. I genuinely appreciate your viewership and continually am working to improve myself and my channel. If you have any feedback, please drop a comment or reach out to me on social media or Discord. Links in the description. As always, have a beautiful day.